Okay, let's do some example problems on the nucleus and radioactivity. All right, here's our first problem. The half-life of radium-226 is 1,599 years. If I have a sample of radium-226, how long do I need to wait for the decay rate to drop by 1%? All right, so we know that the decay rate is just equal to the decay constant for this uh, isotope times the number I've got. All right? So the, the, the initial decay rate, when I first start my experiment, that's just going to be lambda times the number of, of uh, isotopes that I start with, number of nuclei. And then after some time, it's going to k down to n. But the number at any given time, remember our formula was it's n naught e to the minus lambda times time, right? And so if I want the decay rate to go down by 1%, that means I want n to go down by 1%. That's all that really means, right? Because it's proportional to the number of nuclei. And so the equation I want here is basically um, n times 0 0.99, that's 1% smaller, sorry, n naught times 0 0.99 is 1% smaller than n naught. And I want that to equal n naught e to the minus lambda t, right? So after some time, the number of nuclei I have left should be 99% of what I started with. Then the number will have gone down by 1%, which means the rate, the decay rate, will have gone down by 1%. The n naughts cancel out, and I just have to solve 0 0.99 is equal to e to the minus lambda t. That's what I have to solve, all right? But I don't know the decay constant. I know the half-life. The half-life is 1599 years. So T1 half is 1599 years, all right? How do I find the decay constant from that? Well, after one half-life, I should have half of my particles. So N is equal to N naught e to the minus lambda t. If I plug in a half-life for my time, right, n naught is equal e to the negative lambda t one half. If I plug in a half-life, what I should be left with after that time is half of my original particles. So we'll cancel that out, and then we have one half is equal to e to the minus lambda t one half. Um, take the logarithm of both sides, the natural log of both sides, and I get the natural log of one half is equal to, taking the natural log of this just undoes the exponentiation and I get negative lambda t one half, which means that lambda is equal to negative natural log of one half divided by the half life, right? Just solving for lambda. And negative the natural log of one half, you can bring this up, you know, whatever you're multiplying your natural log logarithm by, you can bring it as the exponent of the thing inside, and so that's one half to the negative one power. So in other words, natural log of two times t to the one half. All right, so now I've got my decay constant. I just need to solve the problem. 0 0.99 is equal to e to the minus lambda t, right? I take the natural logarithm of both sides and I'm gonna get the natural log of 0 0.99 is equal to negative lambda t, right? And so my time for it to drop by 1% then is just going to be negative one over lambda natural log of 0 0.99, which is equal to negative t one half over natural log of two times the natural log of 0 0.99. So that should give me my answer. Now, does it make sense if I want to go down by a bigger percent, I have to wait longer, right? And the natural log of something less than one is negative, right? Natural log of one is zero. So this is negative, and as it gets further from one, it will get more negative. So that'll cancel out my negative sign. That's good, I'm gonna get a positive answer. And as this number goes down, the time will go up. That makes sense, all right? If the half-life is longer, I have to wait longer. That's good. So this seems to make sense, all right? And the units, that has no units, that has no units, this is units of time, excellent, all right? So it looks like the units are going to work. So let's just go to our calculator now and plug things in. So the answer is gonna be minus the half-life, which was 
one five nine nine years. That's not an SI units, but it's the only they're the only units in the problem. So I'll just get my answer in years. That's fine. Times the natural logarithm of zero point nine nine divided by the natural logarithm of two, and that gives me twenty three point two years. So twenty three point two years. So if you have a sample of radium, what was it, radium 226, all right, um, and you're doing experiments with it in some research lab, that radium is going to stick around for a long time. It's not going to decay so fast that you can't do your experiments anymore because after 220 or 23.2 years, it will have only dropped in its decay rate by 1%. Okay, here's another problem for you. The half-life of radium 226 is 1599 years. I knew that. Why are you telling me that? It decays by emitting an alpha particle. If I has, have a sample of 10 to the 23rd radium-226 atoms, how many alpha particles are emitted each second? Well, remember, the decay rate is just lambda times the number of particles I have, right? Now, we're not asking about what happens with the time, how it decays. I just want to know right now how much is decaying, all right? But I know the number of particles. That's 10 to the 23rd. And remember, my decay constant is just the natural log of 2 divided by the half-life. So I could just plug all these known things in and get the rate, okay? Um, first of all, does this make sense? If I have twice as many particles, I get twice the decay rate. That makes sense. If my half-life is twice as big, that takes, means it takes me twice as long to decay. I should have half the decay rate. That makes sense. So kind of my equation makes sense. Um, does it have the right units? Number per unit second. Per, time, per unit time, yeah, it's got the right unit. So it looks like I'm, I'm good. I'm not detecting any obvious mistakes I've made, so let's just plug this in. So it's gonna be the natural log of two times, and I always, whenever you're using a calculator programming language, you always wonder, is log base 10 or is it base E? And I plug in log of 10, that should be one if it's base 10. Um, so obviously this is base E, so this is the natural logarithm, so log of two, times, and I said, how many did I have? 10 to the 23rd, 10 to the 23rd, and then I'm gonna divide by the half-life, but the half-life is five, one, five, nine, nine. One, five, nine, nine. that's years, but I wanted to know in seconds, right? So let's convert our year, there's uh, 365 days in a year. Now, okay, if we wanted to do this really carefully, we realized that as a year is not an exact number of days, so maybe to get your three significant digits, you might want to look into that. I'm going to gloss over that for now because I'm the teacher and I can do that. There's 24 hours in a day, there's 60 minutes in an hour, and 60 seconds in a minute, and so this tells us, whoa, that's a lot of decays. So how many? One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 1.37 times 10 to the 12. 1.37 times 10 to the 12 decays per second. Okay, that's uh, those are our example problems.